A Journey Through Time. A Journey Through Yesterday and Today with the Latin Religious Group of Cyprus. A journey to understand the group's contribution in education, commerce, shipping, medicine, architecture, the arts, and culture. Traveling back in time, we meet the King of England, Richard the Lionheart, who conquered the island in 1191. Later, he sold it to the Templars. Then the people of Nicosia rebelled, and Richard the Lionheart was forced to return to Cyprus. He sold the island once again to the French nobleman Guy de Lusignan. The Lusignan period lasted until 1489. The Venetian period followed and lasted until 1570. It is said, though, that Richard the Lionheart stopped in Cyprus to meet and marry Berengaria, the Princess of Navarre. They were initially to get married in Jerusalem, but due to a sea storm, Berengaria's ships stopped in Cyprus. Richard followed her, and they got married in Cyprus. Let's begin our journey with the Latin religious group of Cyprus, the Roman Catholics of Cyprus, and get to know their past contribution and continuing importance. Nicosia. Our route begins from Nicosia with our first stop at the Church of Santa Sofia, the largest church in Nicosia. Its construction started in 1209, based on the imposing Gothic plans of the Notre Dame of Paris, but it was never completed. It was inaugurated in 1326 and consists of the main temple and five smaller chapels. During the Lusignan and the Venetian periods, it was the see of the Latin Catholic Archbishop. Here the Lusignans were crowned kings of Cyprus. After the conquest by the Ottomans in 1570, this imposing cathedral was turned into a mosque. In 1954, it was renamed Mosque Selimier in honor of the Sultan Selim II. The Church of the Holy Cross Catholic Church is close to the Paphos Gate. It was built in 1596 by Franciscan monks and was a point of reference and a place of residence during Ottoman rule. After a donation of 100,000 pesetas from the Queen of Spain, Maria Cristina, the founding stone of the church was placed in 1900. The interior has a Baroque style and the ceiling is hand-painted. The exterior is surrounded by a 150 meter long wall. The bell tower has a distinctive cone shape, the only one in Cyprus. The church has founded the center of St. Joseph the Migrant for the protection of foreign workers with meeting areas for their activities where many of them gather on Sundays. A new room was completed recently in the churchyard. Important social work is being done by the charity organization of Ayos Antonios, the oldest benevolent society in Cyprus, founded in 1925. The St. Joseph School, widely known in Cyprus as Calogrias, or nuns, was founded by French nuns of the Order of St. Joseph the Migrant in 1884. The language study and quality of education that it offered attracted as students girls from various religions until 1997. 
The Paphos Gate, known as Gate of St. Dominique, was during Ottoman rule one of the three gates, along with those of Amohostos and Kirinya, that allowed entrance and exit from the walled city. The Castelliotisa was built during the Lusinian period. This medieval room is situated near the Church of the Holy Cross and resembles a castle, Castelli in Italian, hence its name. Today, it is managed by the Ministry of Education and Culture as a cultural center. The Venetian walls of Nicosia, built between 1567 and 1570 by the Venetian architect Giulio Savorniano, having the shape of a star. Eleven heart-shaped bastions, named after the noble families, who sponsored the project, Rocas, Tripoli, Davila, and the Three Gates. The walls substituted the older Lusinian ones and were a prototype of Renaissance French architecture. The Terrasata School is the oldest educational institution in Cyprus. It was founded by Franciscan monks in 1646 aiming at the cultivation of virtue and good manners. At first, it was located close to the Church of the Holy Cross of the Paphos Gate. In 1956, it was transferred to the Acropolis area in an imposing building where children attend kindergarten, elementary, and secondary through seventh grade, regardless of their national and religious background. The school has its small chapel of St. Barnabas. The Famagusta Gate is the largest and most grandiose of the three medieval gates of the Nicosia Walls. The road from Famagusta to Nicosia ended here. The Venetians named it Porta Giuliana in honor of the architect of the city wall, Giulio Savorniano. The Ottomans named it Tatel Kale, the shortest fortress, while the Britons named it Channel Squadron Gate, since the first British soldiers led by the Rear Admiral Lord John Hay entered from here. Today, the gate is a cultural center of the Nicosia municipality. Until 1937, the aqueduct of Nicosia operated near the Famagusta Gate, where it was uncovered a few years ago. Between the church and the Fanero-Meni School for Girls is the Misericos Cross. Its history is a mystery and the same applies to its name. According to tradition, it was named after Monsieur Henri, a king from 1285 until 1324. It is believed that King Henri came here from his palace, located where the municipal market is today, to pray. Today, the area is run by the Department of Antiquities. Larnaca. Leaving the capital behind us, our journey of discovery continues to the city of Xenonos, Larnaca, the city where the first consulates were established. The castle of Larnaca was built at the end of the 14th century by King James I as a part of a chain of defense projects from the Pila Cape to the Akrotiri Cape. It was enforced during the Venetian period and it was later restored by the Ottomans. 